Hey there everyone, welcome to the video here on the channel, my name is Emily. Today we are at Los Angeles Union Station and we're here with our Metrolink MP36 we taking it out to depot, putting it out to stable. Now, um, obviously I haven't covered the other Metrolink route we have, to be totally honest with you, I probably won't, I just do not enjoy um, that kind of driving, but we'll, like I said, I'm going to protect this out to stable. The MP36, um, and uh, obviously we've got a regular coach on the back. So, get in our seat. I definitely enjoyed though how much busier it, um, the station is here since the since the uh, update. So, quickly trying to check. They're all up. No, we won't because we're inconsistent with the screenshot. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I'm quickly just checking over the train. Head and power. Pep on. So we're going to we want to make sure the train is still powered because we've got the AC on it. Pep source will be train lined. Headlights, those can go on always. Sorry, I'm, what I'm looking for, I'm totally honest with you, is the an isolation for the, the alerter. I can't find it, so I'm going to run without it. Which will, of course, be fine. So we've got an amber at the end. What we'll do is draw along the platform for the signal that we want to move. Or the dispatcher. Give him a bell. <coughs> oh! Ow. Oh, I've got an, an amber. Fantastic. Actually, we are at five in the platform, so I'll wait to get up to or fifteen. Sorry, I'll wait to get up to fifteen, and then we'll. No, it's not a fifteen. It's a ten. I always get confused by that because for some reason my head is. I always thought it was fifteen. There we go. Ten. Um, we've got the F one two five course. This is the local that comes with the previous Surfliner route. These are the coaches that came previously. However, we now have these new coaches and the original cab cars. You can see as well they lash two trains together sometimes, which is quite cool. And then we've got some stored coaches over here. Oh no, that, oh no that's just a platform. That's cool. But here they can sneak around and get out. That's quite good. Do much too. Just keep her powering. We've got obviously the flashing amber, which is basically the next signal to red. But yeah, there you go. So we've got the the, the, the train on today. It's quite a cool little train. I'm enjoying it, to be honest. Like I say, we're just doing a run out to uh, CMA, which is the central maintenance facility. So we are going to basically take the train in, refuel it, put, put it to bed, um, and then that'll be the video. It's just a little bit of a different format, um, and I quite enjoy doing these ones because no other train sim routes I'm aware of where you actually get to go and you know take a train out of service, put it away in the depot and do it properly. Obviously, we'll drive to the depot and train some classic and, and park the train, but you can't do the servicing, which you can here. Arguably, you'd not do the servicing in in uh, in the IRLs, but we don't talk about that part. <laughs> we don't talk about that part. Once the tail end of our train passes the um, once the tail end of our train passes the signals, we go to twenty five.
mine. That's how far we've got past it, so... I want to take a mm. little screenshot here because I'm quite enjoying this. Okay, I'm supposed to understand that now. There we go. We can't wind up on things. So. One more cloud climb. We're really going off this planet. Right, here we go. Alright. 25 miles per hour. Oh wow, it's actually breaking though. That's awkward. go to 25. 25 no reason. So obviously the main route for towards San Bernardino goes that way. So we are literally leaving the main route now. We are we are effectively route learning on the um, on the original release for this. But yeah. Flashing yellow. Doing a fairly genteel acceleration. So it's 30 once we pass that, but we've got crossover as well. Ignore the fact that we're speeding by one mile now. One mile now, I don't I'm not bothered about one mile now. Right. I understand basic horn signals from America. So you can see again, there's a 50 limit here, but as we've done to the train, we'll take power going under here. Also, we are literally turning off momentarily for, for CMOF, so it's fun to sort of thrash the train and just see how quickly you can make it go. Actually, I'm going to go into that notch four. So we can get up to about 40 before we have to start slowing down again. Obviously this would not be very comfortable if you are a passenger, but there's no passengers on board the train today. I will actually give it until I, if I, until I start the sight the start signal. Oh, the, the depot signal, sorry. Forty-five. Let's see, don't I? Right. Sharp break. Oh, there. So 
is a 10 over this point worth, and then it drops to a 5, passing this depot start signal here. We'll actually eventually end up putting our train to bed on that road there. We've just got to go up to the other end of the depot first to get refueled, and then turn back. issue for me with this is these trains are very difficult to control at slow speed. We've got low noise. So there you can see the Antelope Valley Line trains coming down there. F1, F1, oh no, it's an MP36 pushing. This is what an MP36 sounds like at its speed. Um, um. Very quiet. Interesting. And no marker lights. That's always fun. Marker lights in America are different to marker lights in the UK. That was, that's just to go via that marker. I do have the markers on purely so that we can double check that would be in path correctly. Which would be R currently. No, it's just, um, obviously in this, there's very specific stopping points that it wants from you. Which wouldn't be as important in reality. But it's just good to, it just makes it easier to pass the game. I don't have to go, oh, that's not passed. Shunt forward a bit, shunt back a bit, try and find the spot that it likes kind of manoeuvre. So, ages ago I was told by a trusted, a trusted source that Dovetail would only do 15, like, for the same periods like this, Dovetail would make it 50 limit. Here's been made a 5, and I wonder whether they've quietly walked back the fact that they were going to do it at 15 limit, or whether um, Metrolink has said, no, it has to be a 5, it's a safety issue. And they've gone, okay. We 
do think I should really do probably a ghost then. Since we are on a depot road then. There is a bit of a doubt uh, uphill grade here, so. Yeah. So we are going to draw up here to the uh, to the refueling point. I will say I, had, I don't have it installed at the moment. The Chest W God Mode mod allows you to not speed, but basically allows you to sort of scrub through different sort of clouds and stuff and it was so cool to go from basically clear to fully overcast and put a bit of snow on those hills. Actually no we did a, a route running video like we did, no, did the full length on an Antelope Valley. But it's just like I say it's just not a route I enjoy and I'm being totally honest when I say that. It's just not a route I enjoy. There you go. There you go. We need to stop at the correct point here to make it ourselves. That should be fine. So, we're going to secure the train. Turn the reverse handle out. We've put, we've basically turned the brake off. Turn the reverse handle out, and we're going to take out the control and fuel pump, which basically stops the train being able to move. So no matter what, this train won't move now, which is what we like. Watch this not be in range. Wonderful. And I stopped short of the marker there as well. Well, good job we noticed. go. Should have done that move with the field cap off, but oh well. There we go, that's in now. So you can see we're about two thirds of the tank full. 
showing the valve and see how it's starting to fill, which is quite cool. <coughs> hmm. It's a shame you only really get this on the American locos. Never refueled an English one. To be honest, the only, only diesels we get are the HSTs and well, 158s now as well. It'd be nice to have it as a feature as well. It's turning itself off automatically, but... Okay, give it a second... Bing! Bing, 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 bing! There we go, put the nos nos away. Screw that on. There we go! It makes you appreciate how big these things are, doesn't it? I think the tariff is 1 meter 50 tall. Built in Boise over in Idaho, MP36. Built in December 2008. You know what? For a 2008 build logo, this looks ancient, doesn't it? I mean, I suppose it is, what, 14 now? But still. I think it's delivery that's not helping, it matters. So. And the bell as soon as the front of the train leaves the refueling area. So next we are basically pulling all the way to the end of it onto a shunt neck, and at the shunt neck we reverse, so we're going to just now walk down the train and get back on the other end. Yeah, the end of the train is just starting now out there. You can see the line's climbing away to our right. We're sort of vaguely on the level. If I lean around, can you just try to see the mark if I want to stop? No, you can't. You can just sit back down. But we do an end change, which is quite good fun. Oh, quite low vent. Um, well, actually, I'm going to put the AC to low core since we're getting off. And then basically, what we're doing is we're just putting the train in a state where, making sure that we leave the train in a state where when we, you know, our colleague comes to pick it up in the afternoon, the cab is a pleasant environment to be in. That's why I've made sure that the uh, head end power is on. So that means that the entire train has power running it, coursing through its veins. We'll ignore that speeding right now. Oh look, what's that? It's a truck. Almost like I'm well overdue an American truck. So this is definitely fast last now, I don't know what you're talking about. I 
if you want, I'm throwing stupid down my Christophers. So we are, yeah, to our carriage and a half length away from being clear of the point work that we need to be clear of. I'm now just going to rag it. Full dynamics. There you go, dynamics now kicking in. They take a second. We're at two, which is probably the point that we can throw the, throw, throw the brake pipe. Rivet. Neutral to neutral. Handle off, there we go. That's the position we want it in. We want those to off. We want the marker lights in contact. There we go. Off the arc points. Well, you know what? Since the AIs can't remember either, I'm going to take this as an opportunity to claim that they don't use them. There we go. All right, that is the train on here and disposed of. Um, so down. You definitely wouldn't do that, but okay. Just do, do, do. oh no, you, mm, yeah, you jump from the second step. Mm. That's unsafe. Anyway, we're all stuff for safety, we're going to walk down this side. If you should decide you should have left the train on, but oh well. You can see we've got a surprising number of passengers coming to the depot with us, compared to how many we had for, uh, or you get it in most passenger services, which is frustrating, but you know. Board at this door. Energize the guards panel here. And I'm going to de energize that and I'm just going to use the controls in the cab. But yeah, this is obviously the uh, Rogue Seven cab car. Breaks in. Set them to basically charge the brake pipe up. Reverse can go to forward. Marker lights can come off. Headlights can go on. Make one key mistake though. Forgot to throw a point. Hmm. I think I. You could say I missed the point. In fact, you know what? No, we're going to have a shunt to do it for us because we're lazy and we're engineers poor. Shunter cam, shunter cam. Just whatever. Throw it so that it takes us off to the left. Then. That's us up right. It's actually going to have us avoid the um, the wash road, which is fine by me. Sorry about that, I forgot I had the hood on. Oh, and of course I want.
Okay, so it wants to put the train into suppression. Reset, which is... I'll be honest with you, did not manage this in any of my training videos. That was a dumb button to push. Apologies for that. Man, it's someone going the other way. It will shut up eventually. Much like me. Fuck it, I'll turn those on since we need to. Oh, no one cares. Sand, bell. Can I not cut my brake out on the back? What am I doing wrong here? Oh, let's have to look ahead. There's a cupboard here somewhere with all the safety systems in it. What is it doing out here? No, no it must be on the um, British, the different cab cars. This is just distressing. Hang on, I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back as soon as I've got a bit more than anything. So I have fixed it. As those of you who are familiar with American Traction will undoubtedly be screaming at your screens at home right now. Yeah, you're right. I had been a silly billy. And what I'd done is I had managed to leave my brake cut in in the back cab. So I've just got to fix that. I'm going to use an initial brake application. Look at that bounce. I like that bounce of the points. There we go. Down to five. I think it's being displayed a little bit weirdly, but yeah. I, I like I you know the, the new suspension improvements since uh, when they first got talked about, I was like, what? Why? You barely notice trains moving. No, I oh know you do. Like I can get a train carriage to rock just with my own weight. Like they move quite a bit, especially when passengers are getting on and off. So we're coming down the the, uh, the road there. So yeah, um, you can see the 899 still on the rear, still pushing us down. I've got at the moment um, the soundtrack to And Juliet, the musical stuck in my head. What a show, man. It's like three, we're going for two hours of like IV dopamine. It's great. Yeah, so Cap Car Tour, I guess. Uh, power. Brake doesn't have a loco brake, obviously, but you can see it's the same panel um, that the locos use. In, out, the brake cut in. Um, we've got brake controls, 
forward dip on reverse, a forward steer and reverse, cap heat, basically set all those to on to run. Um, they are useful for engine controls. Our meter, brake, indications, speed, which shows us speeding again. So it's a slow hurdy you roll down. Very close though. Yeah, overall, you know what? I really quite like this route. I wish it wasn't a two-hour drive from one end to the other. And then I might actually find it approachable for a YouTube video. But yeah, it is nice. And as well, it gives you a lovely like length of run now. Because you could really do a proper shift here now on Antelope Valley and San Bernardino. You know, so probably twice up to Antelope and finish again in San Bernardino or something like that, I don't know. Or commute in in the morning from San Bernardino, as some drivers would, you know, or do the 90 minute commute that you're legally entitled to have. Yeah, or just spend the day zooming back and forward to the depot. It is interesting as well as we sort of coast in here, um, just to talk about American rolling stock utilisation on suburban routes. It's awful. Um, the if you look at a lot of um, American stations, they sound really impressive. Like the Union Station in Washington, it sounds really impressive. It's got some like a hundred tracks, hundred platforms, but most of those are just stabling points. I would have been wrong rooted. Tack. I'm not getting out. It took me a second to realise where they wanted me to put it. But yes, yeah, that point was set wrong. Should have checked, but I didn't. They must be testing the um, thingy. Thing with the thing of the thing. You know what though? I'll get out and I'll score the point properly this time since it's so close. Since we're sitting here, we've got one of the, the shunters to check. That's been thrown. And then that's just got us on the right path there. As soon as we stable that, that is us done. That's awkward. You know that's been done before. Oh, you know that's been done before. I want to leave the, the dynamic and setup now because now that we're at five, we're not going to have to accelerate again until we come to the stand. But yeah, we're going down the outside road here at uh, the CMF. Interestingly, I can't see any of the normal coaches except the ones that are like a couple of 
against the Vocos. Be interesting to look at the files for this, but I also can't be bothered. Yeah, they've done the coupling in a funky way. Yeah. So they've not set the, the local substitution up right. Uh, basically, this is so this will be the formation here. But you've got effectively these three uh, coaches in the middle should be substitutable. So you should get like a random little. You get one of like those, one of the you know two of those, that kind of thing, and it'll just completely randomise it every time. That's not been set up, but that's not working right for whatever reason. Um, cause that's what that's, that's why you've got effectively one of those against the loco, just probably to make sure the couplings work, and then yeah, and it just looks a bit weird. Like I'll show you on Antelope Valley, all the the vehicles are the same profile because they don't have these substituting in. Here it's slightly the opposite problem, <laughs> and it shouldn't be like that, but no. Nah. I do enjoy this route though. It's you know so one of the things I really like about this is the is for me as a European sort of train enjoyer. Most American stuff I just can't get my head around. It doesn't feel right. I don't have a frame of reference for it. Right, a point of reference I should say. This gives me that, but it gives me the ability to drive big American trains and go hop hop as I'm driving around. But also, it, it sort of the stop starty style which I quite enjoy, right? <sighs> what what? Um yeah, it's the stop starty style which I quite enjoy. But also you've got three very different experiences from driving. This and the F one two five have a very different cab. This and the MP thirty six have a very different cab. Uh, and, you know, well, MP36 is different to everything else because it's just a generation older. And it gives you a really, from my perspective, a nice driving experience that there's that, that variety in what you deal with. Um, to give you an example of one of the routes I think is weakest in train sim world, out the box, without any substitution or any layers, is help to track that around row. Because you've got the 422 and the 425. 425 is a great loco, so it's a 422, or unit, I should say. But the cabs are nearly identical. That's why Dutto wanted that to do it at the time, because, you know, it, it's easy to do. You, you start with a 422, rebuild that into a 425. Um, and it's a very similar experience driving them. Whereas, um, one of the routes I think does really well, even now, is uh, Great Western Express. And it's got its massive issues, but 166 versus NHST are two very different cabs and two very popular locos. So there you go. Got four miles an hour in the box. Uh, drift up to five, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so this, like I say, for me, this ticks some boxes. I also, I've not had a course to try the route hopping creature yet. I may do a stream on this where we just drive on and or you drive from whatever the top of Antelope Valley is into LA and then LA down to San Bernardino. Um, Yes, Lancaster, so it's the Lancaster to San Bernardino, which... San Bernardino, which is 135 miles. The road distance is 73.1 miles. Interesting. Hang on. Um, Lancaster to San Bernardino. Lancaster to California. So yeah, actually, it is, it's interesting that it's sort of a four-hour journey on public transit uh, on Metrolink foot all the way. But yeah, you sort of... That's interesting. It's really... It's way quicker to go down the back. Um, I'll show you on a map before we dispose of the train and get off and do all the stuff we want to do once we dispose of the train. We are entitled to a break, so we're going to take it on this this empty train, which is very empty indeed. Um,
So again, we'll just dispose of the train once we're here. Did a little bit of steering, but shh, we'll talk about that. And lock mode off. we go. So that is the train now secured. Oh, it's not R96 on here, that's a shame. We'll go up on the priority seats, we've got more like room and we don't need a window whilst we watch here. So, watch this. I look at that to Google Maps time. So this is actually sort of Sa uh, Lancaster Calais to San Bernardino. So quickest way to check is on Caltrain. So our metro link even. Um, gives you an idea of where in the world we are. But end to end, right? That's 45 miles straight line to go into LA. Like it's down the back, it's only 62 miles apart. Whereas if we sort of follow even sort of vaguely the route here. And this is really vague. Like I've not got that in any way exact. Um, but We've gone from sort of doing a 62 mile straight line distance to double that by doing it by train for 35 miles. And then of course we've got Cajon Valley, which you can then go on to. Uh, or Cajon Pass, sorry, which then takes you up to Victorville. So actually, would this work? I was going to take this to, to go a different way. I was going to take this to take a bus. So I was going to take, so I was to take a bus, basically. But still, like, that's insane to look at that and just un to understand. Uh, let's do that. Well, that's done. Let's do that. That gives us a theoretical now longest distance. Just put downtown San Bernardino as here, which is what I think it was. Yeah, near enough. There. 157 miles, which is that's a pretty decent length run for train some wells. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today's YouTube video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget that like button. I'm gonna open the door so I can get off this train. Like the video if you did. Subscribe to see more from me every Monday, Saturday and Sunday. Or Saturday, Sunday and Monday. And until next time, guys. Good day. See ya.